In this video, we're going to do a quick review of the formulas you need to know if you're studying atomic theory. Things like wavelength, frequency, speed of light, energy of a photon, and so forth. So here's the first equation you need to be familiar with. C is equal to lambda times nu. C represents the speed of light. It's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Lambda, this represents the wavelength. And the Greek letter nu, uh, that's the frequency. So if we need to calculate wavelength using that formula, it's equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. The frequency is going to be the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Now, the next equation you need to be familiar with is this one. E is equal to H times the frequency. E represents the energy of a photon. H is a constant, specifically Planck's constant, and it's equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. The frequency has the units hertz or seconds to the minus one. Now keep in mind, the speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Solving for the frequency, we get it's equal to the speed of light divided by lambda. Now we can replace the frequency with what we have here. Now we can get the energy of the photon in terms of starting from its wavelength. So that's hc over lambda. So if you know the frequency of light, you can calculate the energy of those light particles, which will be the photons that represent those light particles. If you know the wavelength of light, you can use this formula to calculate the energy. Now, typically, you're going to be given the wavelength in nanometers, and so you need to remember that one nanometer is equal to one times 10 to the minus nine meters. So if your wavelength is, let's say, 450 nanometers, you could just plug into your calculator 450 times 10 to negative 9 meters into this formula to get the energy of the photon. Now, the next equation we're going to talk about has to do with the photoelectric effect. So let's say we have a piece of metal and we have electrons on this metal and we decide to shine either blue light or ultraviolet light. If those light particles have enough energy, they can knock off the electrons from that metal. The kinetic energy of the ejected electron is equal to the difference between the energy of the incoming photon minus the work function or the threshold energy of that particular metal. It can vary from metal to metal. The energy of the incoming photon can be represented by H times, you know, the frequency. The threshold energy is going to be Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. And of course, you can write the equation this way. We can replace frequency with the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So I like to use the equation in this form. So if you know the wavelength of light that is striking the metal and you know the work function or the threshold energy of the metal, you can calculate the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. Now, once you calculate the kinetic energy, sometimes you, need, you may need to calculate the speed of the electron. And so you could use this formula. Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared. The mass of an electron is 9.8. 1, 1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. By the way, for those of you who want a list of these formulas, if you want to be able to print it out, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting a formula sheet that has all of these formulas and more. Now, sometimes you may need to calculate the maximum wavelength that is needed to free an electron from a metal. 
and that max wavelength is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the threshold energy or the work function. Now sometimes the work function, instead of giving it to you in joules, you may get it in electron volts and you need to convert it to joules. One electron volt is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So you could use that conversion factor to convert the work function from electron volts to joules. Now the next formula we're gonna talk about is de Broglie's wavelength. To calculate the de Broglie wavelength, it's equal to the Planck's constant divided by the mass of the object and the speed of the object. If you need to calculate the momentum of a particle or even a photon, it's simply mass times velocity. And you can also use this equation to calculate the momentum, Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. Now sometimes you need to calculate the energy of a photon that is emitted from a hydrogen atom. So let's say you have a hydrogen atom and let's say this is the first energy level, the second energy level, and the third energy level. And let's say we have an electron in the third energy level and it falls to the first energy level. When an electron falls from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, it's going to emit radiation, typically in the form of photons. So we want to be able to calculate this emitted photon. The energy of the emitted photon is negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared. By the way, for those of you who want to see example problems on how to use this formula, feel free to check out the links uh, down below this video. I'm going to be posting some other YouTube videos that has example problems that show you how to, to use these formulas that you're seeing here. So for this particular example, the electron, it went from the n equal 3 energy level to the n equal 1 energy level. So ni, the initial energy level, would be 3. n final, the final energy level is 1. And then once you plug this in, you can get the energy of the photon. And once you know the energy of the photon, you can calculate the frequency using this formula, E over H, or you can calculate the wavelength by taking the Planck's constant, multiplying by the speed of light, and dividing it by the energy. So once you know the energy, you can calculate the frequency of the photon and its wavelength, if needed, using those two formulas. Now, some other things that you may need to know. We talked about the mass of an electron. You also need to know the mass of a proton, which is 1.6726 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And the mass of a neutron is 1.6749 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. For those of you who want the rest of the notes and formulas for this kind of topic, feel free to check out the formula sheet. And you can get the formulas that we've discussed in the video today for those of you who prefer just to print it out. So I'm going to stop it here. And thanks again for watching this video.